call the meeting to your daughter. It's the Moortown Select Board. It is Monday, October 7th. Uh, we have a full board and a uh, fair amount of people here. I hope everyone, if you have an opportunity, if you haven't yet, if you could please sign in, you can pass that around. Um, so we're going to open with uh, general public comment. So um, let's go ahead and start. I'm not sure who was here first, but the, the lady in the red sweater, Miss, are you here for? Oh, I, I have to talk about the, the library. Okay, so you're, Peter, are you here for? All right, why don't we start with you? Okay. Um, so actually, actually, quickly, uh, I know a lot of these folks are here, but the library always tend to say that, but uh, I, I would like to put my voice in here as well. I don't know if all of you know this, but I am actually a librarian in my day job. And um, I think that the, the upstairs of the town hall sounds like a, a great location for the library, especially as a, as a as temporary fix, as the from what I've read from the documents, as, as planning goes on and it's it's um, further researched and, and all that, I think um, I think that sounds like a, a great plan for this winter, at least if not if not part of it. Uh, so I just want to get that out there. The the uh, other thing I want to talk about, you, talk about with you, surprise surprise, is the ongoing uh, machinations of the HUSD school board. Um, one, I'd like to thank all of you for following through after many citizens talked in the spring and, and writing a, a very powerful and important letter to, to the board. Um, I think that I think that all of you sharing concerns lends instant credibility to uh, the conversation. It's not just a you know a few um, you know so-called angry people or whatever you want to say. It's 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 really. Um, it's, it's really great. Uh, John spoke up at a couple of meetings. Um, my wife and I were sending out how great that was for, for him to share his wealth of experience and um, how much we appreciate it. Uh, so, so thank you for that. I then wanted to talk about how I'm obviously worried about the idea of closure. <clears throat> and while I think that, I'm, well, I, I guess I should say I'm cautiously optimistic that we can convince them that Moortown is a thriving school because it is, and we're working really hard to help them realize that. And I'm still really worried about Faceton's plight. Um, but as far as specifically Moortown is concerned, that relates to all of you, is that I'm really worried that some sort of so called compromise is seemingly popular amongst the board that would do any number of things to Moortown past the grades of like pre K, kindergarten, first, and second grade. There's ideas of potentially sending three plus somewhere, five, six to cross at Brook. And so I worry about that for two reasons. The first and the biggest reason is that I think that fifth and sixth graders still uh, deserve the right to attend a public school in their, in their hometown if they want to. I think that they're leaders in the school. I think that would really um, be a disservice to everyone in the school to have those fifth and sixth graders elsewhere. Um, and I think that uh, Fifth, fifth graders are still very young to be to be riding on buses all the way uh, to the other side of the difference. So in some instances, I'll, I didn't know if I was going to do this or not, but I'll point out to you on the map that we have a really interesting, as you know, we have a really interesting geography to our town, and our roads kind of uh, hug the corners of this diamond here. And for example, this is where I live, right there in this last, uh, property way down here in this in this corner, and so um, to get to Cross at Brook uh, for a fifth grader would be 18.8 miles, and I don't even want to try to calculate what that would be on a school bus because I know that from this bus stop here at the corner of McGibbons Road, it's already you know 40 plus minutes it's just to work on elementary school. So that, I, I just think that that's something to really consider. Obviously, we have all these folks that live on. You know, Herring Brook, Jones Brook, Lynch Hill. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just think our geography does not lend itself to young elementary students busing, busing all over a large re regional district. And so, um, that's all. I just wanted to thank you. And I wanted to just bring up that concern that while I am cautiously optimistic that people are, are getting our narrative that the more kind of thriving because, because it is. Um, I, I worry about a, some sort of compromise coming in at the last minute that, that really I don't think is a, is a compromise, and so we need to stay stay um, mm -hmm. diligent. 
Thank you, Peter. Thank you. I appreciate um, your efforts as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and, and your letters and time you've put in, uh, in in the board as well. I know John and I, um, and maybe other board members did or not, I didn't see you, uh, attended last Wednesday's um, meeting up at the high school. Uh, and, and John and I discussed it a little bit last night. Um, so coming out of that, I guess we need a, a lot of um, questions answered as well. So we're seeking a, a meeting with um, the chair of the board uh, to see if we can at least the three of us sit down, uh, just to see really where she is at um, and what are some of the other criteria that they're going to uh, consider when they're making these decisions um, at that meeting. They said they would be making that decision fairly quickly. Kristen, right next to you can uh, um, confirm or deny that. Um, so we feel that there's a lot of things that were left out of that presentation um, that really need to be considered before one makes those decisions. Um, and reading the valid report of this past week, I, I saw a lot of, we're gonna make these decisions based on the financial uh, parameters. And all right, if we're going to do that, then we need to make sure that we have all of the information that's available uh, and consider everything that's out there. And I don't think that's been done yet. So we're going to try to see if we can't um, maybe persuade the, the board chair to look at some of those things. And I might add, that it's, it's really important, not just with the chair, but for each and every board member to reach out one-on-one -on -one to the board members. I think they need education. I mean, this is a big process. Budgeting is a huge process. And when you're throwing in a big, big expenditure like this with really no direction, at all, it takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of education, and it takes experience, which we don't have on that board. Yeah, I asked them, in one of my last letters to the board, I asked them, the question, in that meeting it as no slight to the superintendent, saying that if you were going to undertake a multi-million dollar bond and, and asking them about their own job, you know, a multi-million dollar project, would they, would they just ask one employee to, to kind of do everything by themselves? Or would they do a much more extensive inquiry and I'd be kind of asking them that rhetorical question and hoping they would reach the answer that, of course, they would do a more extensive inquiry. You know, they wouldn't just have, have one person be the, be the decider of everything, no matter how skilled and knowledgeable that, that, that person may be. You know? So it's, it's, um, it's just interesting to me that some of the board members don't seem to, to grasp that, what I, what I think is a kind of common sense point. No, I think so he, he made a very good point there. Uh, Kristen, were you um, here for public comment? I was just here to be here in case. Anyone had any questions on schools? Does anyone have any questions for Kristen? We can take a moment. I, I'm also here because of the, for the, about the library, but I also have one other comment before that. All right, go ahead. So I wanted to follow up on our meeting that we had um, about the bridge being under construction next June, June to August, yep. right? And the use of what's going to happen, the, the Pony Farm Road usage. So as I understand from that meeting, the state does um, fund some of the work and some of the stuff that's going to have to take place on that road. So I would like to suggest in conjunction with Waitsfield, that we not only just have signs there that say what the speed limit is, that we perhaps come up with a sign that asks people like, hey, you're driving down a road where there's walkers and dogs and bicyclists and, you know, and also joggers, everything. If you go on that road, you see tons of people every day. And just a sign saying, hey, people, come on, beware. Drive with care or slow down, you know, watch for all these users. Something like that, more than the average just slow down sign. It might help at either end of that, yeah. of that, because uh, that road is going to be nuts. <laughs> no, I think that's any suggestions that we can and we'll look at them all and, and try to figure out. I think sometimes those work as well as um, other speed traps or you know, yeah, other yeah. speed things like that. I mean, people really we ask people making people aware of it. it. Yeah. I think a lot of times it's just making people aware. Yeah, to be courteous. Yeah. Can we stand up there with the library scanner as if we're doing that? 
But you know, uh, it's funny, I used to um, drive to Plainfield, Vermont quite a bit, and there was a guy that would do that, that would stand out in the middle, and he had, I don't know what the hell it was, but it was something, and you always, I mean, everyone in front of the, you know, the, yeah. so it works, so I, everyone tries it, so, Corey, uh, anytime. Pardon me. Um, all right, so anyone else for general public comments? Ray, are you here for public comment or just? Um... Well, I do have a little bit. Go ahead. I'm here for something else later. Um, what is, did we find out who the flatbed or the low boy that tore up the sidewalk going up the mountain road? No, we did not. Um, I had Sasha checked into, uh, who was it, was it uh, Northfield? Because we thought it was someone that was doing work over there. Um, and they said they didn't have people doing the work, so we don't. It went up over again today. But I was Pardon me? That same truck went up the Mount Road this afternoon. But I was going the wrong way, so I didn't find out who it was. Well, if you do find out who it is, you, you, you let us know. Um, I know Wendell thought he knew who it was, and I looked into it, and it's, there was no evidence there that, it, that uh, it was that group. Was it a dump truck? Uh, what, what did you see? A uh, low bed or? A big low bed, and it had a, uh, a compactor on it, big compactor. And then the other day, I thought it was a, a head wheeler went up or it had the other set of tires in the front, and I think it had a load of blacktop. So maybe, you know what, Sasha, why don't you give Northfield a call again and see yeah. if there's anything else going on there? Because they can't come through the bridges on the other side, so that's why I'm, I'm thinking it's got to be maybe some work they're doing on this side. Ray, maybe. You could take a ride that way. Well, I, I was up through there last week, and I know that Northfield was paving from the covered bridges up to the town line last week. Yeah. Pipe was paving. Mm -hmm. right. Was it a yellow truck? Yeah. Was it I, I didn't think it was pipe. I think it was pipe. But it was pipe doing the paving last week up there yeah. on Moore Town Mountain. Well, I don't know if you could stop anyone else working with them. Or, or, or. Okay. All right. Anyone else for general public um, comment? All right, see so none will move on. Uh, so we have the library trustees. You guys want to move up, the trustees? Seems like a game show, you know, like you can scoot up oh, the fastest. Let me tell you. <laughs> Karen, are you taking notes for today? I think everyone is signed in. Thank you for, uh, for doing it. Right. Oh, well, maybe not. As we know, we can read Ray's name. Okay. I just don't know who it's name, so. Oh, I left uh, Elga's thing. Okay. All right, so you guys, we're going to come back. Um, we had some other proposals, I guess, for your Elga was looking at. Um, Doing a plot for us, is that right? Uh, so I have a sort of three scenario option sheet that we could go over first, or I don't know what we want to do first. Sure. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. So we, I've only printed out four copies, so maybe you guys can look on for it. Sure. This is what we came up with at our last library meeting. It was our special meeting. Uh, do you guys want me to speak to it? Okay. Um, a shelving refers to low bookcases upstairs from the current library. So we had a chance to connect with the Historical Society and they would be willing to loan those low bookshelves that are upstairs right now that currently don't have a lot on them. Um, there's one other bookcase to the right of the windows that they also said would be available to us. So let me just start that again. Libraries use only the main floor of the town hall for the shelves and programming. 
Best entrance for this scenario is the main door on the Route 100 B side. Scenario two, shelving only along the perimeter of the main town hall floor, children's collection and toys on the stage, and programming in the basement. Either the main door or the side entrance could be used for this scenario. Scenario three, all shelving on the stage, including the adult and children's collection with programming happening in the basement. The side door entrance would be best for this scenario. Some programming ideas that we have uh, that would be coming up possibly even in the very near future would be um, inter intergenerational pumpkin carving. Um, there is the Simple Supper that is coming up. And Correct. It's we had to there. reschedule it, but it will be October 27th. Senior lunch with Canesta. I didn't know what Canesta <laughs> Um, Dungeons and Dragons, um, Super Bowl Sunday, as in soup, as in soup, not as in super. Um, <laughs> super, as in a chili cook-off, Mrs. Claus, um, and read and chat programs. So that could be some of the programming that could happen in the basement. Um, and thank you, Mrs. Claus. You're welcome. <laughs> Shh, that's a secret, John. Nobody knows who she really is. <laughs> Um, we have a lot of information about why we are concerned about um, putting books into the basement. Elizabeth has some information on mold that she can present. Corey has some information from Stowe Library that's had to re um, they've had to replace their collection recently due to a fire, not a flood, but it no, just. Water. It was water. Oh, it was water. Oh, from the fire. Oh, right. So it was fire. It and was then water. there was a fire. They actually had two things happen. Oh, okay. I thought it was just the fire. Um, so Corey has some information on oh, um, the consequences of that for the keep dropping things. So we can get um, Elga's board out if you wanted to look at scenario one, two, or three with um, the, you know, the little right. magnets, yes. again. It's a helpful to you to have a visual. So we could start with any of those. So we have any questions? Well, I thought we had requested a scenario with everything in the basement. You did, and we looked at it, and we looked at the mold possibilities, and we felt that it would be irresponsible as a library board to even mm -hmm. spend any time on that. And we'd be happy to share that information with you. Mm -hmm. So um, I put together some facts on mold because it felt a little like a gut instinct for us to say no books in the basement. So we thought it would be helpful to give you some some numbers and some facts on some things. Um, so the ideal environment for libraries and archives, and you guys probably know some of this with the vaults here, um, is a little bit different from combined stack and user areas. But in either scenario, um, you want your relative humidity in the 30s or 40s. Um, and we have been unofficially monitoring the humidity in the basement because we were curious. Um, and it has been in the 50 to 60 percent range, so that's above what the recommendations are. Um, and I was also really interested to learn that mold growth can start within 48 to 72 hours of less than ideal conditions. So the cooler it is and the more humid it is, the more risk we're facing of mold developing um, in the collection. And it has impacts both on humans, and I've listed some here, I think the illness and death is probably a little bit dramatic. <laughs> um, but you know, we're talking about people with weak immune systems, um, and if we were to have read and play down there, we've got babies. Corey just had read and play last week with three little tiny aid. babies. Very cute. Um, and so we wouldn't want to risk our patrons um, or our materials because mold can weaken and stain and eat the pages of the books. So those are the concerns that we have about putting the entire library in the basement. Or even part of it because even part of it. the mold could then go back to 
the library when we move back in the spring, and then it can spread. And so the, the current value of our total collection right now is about $118,564 based on a report that I ran in our cataloging system. Um, I know there's been discussion about insurance covering, and so I reached out to Stowe, because as you know, well, as you just heard, they had their entire collection lost to sprinkler damage. Uh, and basically, the insurance was only willing to pay about 40% of the total. Uh, they did up that to 60%, because Stowe could prove that their publication dates were new. I doubt that would be true of our collection. So if you just use those figures for quick math, that means we could be responsible for up to $70,000 in replacement fees. If we factor in the typical discount we get when we purchase books, that still would be close to $50,000 potentially. Uh, and it just seems silly to risk that for a temporary move that we're just asking for a solution for the winter. Um, the other piece that Stowe's really been going through is the uh, frustration of the public and their patrons at how slow it has been to replace the collection. Uh, the library director estimates it's going to take, they've been going through at least, they've been doing this for at least six or eight months. That She thinks it's going to take another year to get to even two-thirds full. So it's no small feat. This collection has been built up over years and years. It's not just something I put together in the last three years. So it's really a, a legacy that reflects the town's interests and needs. A lot of the books in there wouldn't be replaceable even. They just aren't in print anymore. So I think that that's really the main concern with putting paper down in the basement for this, this short temporary move that we're asking for while we continue to engage the community on what the possibilities could be. For a long term. I also um, did get one email that I don't know if Sasha had time to forward to you in support. I don't know if I should have given that to you during public comment, but it was another conversation about how uh, you know, a mom with young kids would not be interested in hanging out in the basement. That would not draw her there. I could read it if you want or That's right. Clark hand Hammond it to you. Sent one. He said he was in support too. This is from Leslie Polizinski. Did you see that? Yep. Okay. And Roger Strauss as well. Yep. So, I don't know. Any other comments? Questions? Yeah. I'm interested in that because if you look at Aldrich Library, and I've been there multiple times, I do multiple visits with families there a week. That's a very. Yep. Yes. Their whole children's section is in the basement of their place, and they have made it an amazing welcoming space and I'm pretty sure because I went to school in Warren that the school has mold in Warren so I'd be interested to see what they're doing with their school library because I believe that mold was fully mitigated it was a roof leak issue a few years ago the school board members here could probably speak to that better but it's the same thing it was there with the book so I'd be interested to see what they were doing about that and the mold also in the basement was cleaned, what, last mm -hmm. year? Yeah, so. it was mitigated, but. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think we haven't, um, but if there's, if it's that dangerous, I guess I wouldn't want anyone in the, in the town hall period until we have it looked into. Um, right, it's not a library issue. It's not a library issue. Fix that. Okay. I, I don't even think it's necessarily black mold, which is sort of the toxic mold. I think it's <clears throat> any mold in general can destroy a book collection. I understand. Very so we'll, we'll need to have that um, looked at. And I don't know what the basement is like, the Aldridge Library. It's one of the biggest libraries in the state. I'm sure that they are monitoring it and keep it at the right humidity. So I guess what we're saying is that um, we've come to you and, and the select board voted for a temporary solution just to help us out because we don't want our town employees using a frozen portal lead and the safety and all the reasons that you voted that we needed a temporary solution. So we're not here asking for thousands of dollars to mitigate the basement because nobody has voted that 
a massive renovation needs to be done to the town hall, to the basement, to maybe make it what Callie's talking about. Maybe that's where we want to go eventually once we've had a committee and done lots of community engagement. Maybe that is where we as a town want to go. But right now, we're looking for a six-month winter solution. <coughs> and there's no way that's going to happen in the next few weeks before winter hits. And we just need a safe place for our awesome employees to be for the winter. And patrons. And, and patrons <laughs> to be. And it just seems like we've got the space that's being heated. We've got lots and lots of people that are saying we would really love to be in that historic space. We'd love to use it. We want it to be vibrant. People are writing, people are coming, people in our community engagement have been supporting this. It's temporary. <coughs> um, it seems like, you know what, if we do this until spring and we all find out it wasn't great and it didn't work, well, then we know, right? But it seems like it could, it could be a great trial for our town to just see what's it like to use that building on a regular basis. And if somebody wants to use it for a, a birthday party or a wedding or a, 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 God forbid, a funeral, come on in. Like, there's no reason why it wouldn't be used, <coughs> be able to be used. No reason at all. Like, come on in. You know, we just, we just, <coughs> I want to recognize we have an amazing <coughs> town employee here. And we really want to support Corey, and we want to support her having a healthy, safe work environment. And we want to support our our patrons, and um, you know, for me, that's the bottom line. It's like let's you know let's show her we got her back. Thoughts? Yeah, scenario three. You have the side door entrance would be best. So why would scenario two, which doesn't seem to be that much different, you, we, you, know, you have main door or side entrance? I think scenario three, everything's on the stage. So the access for people that can use the stairs would be quicker from the side. Where scenario two, it's around the perimeter, like uh, Elda showed you during the last meeting. So I don't actually, I don't think we should be looking at any scenario at this point. I think what we first need to do is have a look at the basement, have someone come in and assess the town hall to see if it's safe for you. So let's start with there. In the meantime, I'll try to get in touch with the landfill and maybe we can use that building over there for the winter. Um, does that even work for programs? I don't know. I haven't really ever been in that space. Well, we don't know if we can use it either. The other options of maybe we have to um, close the library for the winter. I don't know. Um, but we can take a look into it and see. I mean, I don't see what else we can do. I mean, we've been, they've told us the place is not safe. We're um, saying the basement is not safe for books. Not that the town hall is not safe. For human beings. <coughs> Well, that's what I'm, I'm, not what I'm hearing. You're showing me pictures of babies and telling me you don't want to get them sick. You know no. what? You're putting me in a um, spot no, when you're saying No, actually, that. I was showing you that picture because it was in reference to an email from a mother with small children. And, you know, if you look at that picture, whether or not they get sick, do you really think they're going to be spending time in the basement on the floor? I don't think it's really putting you on the spot. Well, I think we need to look into the building to make sure it's safe before anything else goes on in the building. That's the other thing is we could reduce the humidity with the dehumidifier. Um, also in the winter, I don't think you're going to have a humidity problem down there. Not with the heat on all the time. Or most of the time. So there is already a dehumidifier there, is there not? There is. I emptied it in July. What's that? I emptied one in July. You did? Oh, okay. So you might just see that. Okay. So when I talked about that, we weren't sure. We know that in the past we had had one, but yeah, we weren't sure. There was one. There. I don't know if there is still one. Yeah. Well, it looks like there is still one. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's not. Is there working or not? 
So sorry. is there anybody on the board that is supportive of what a lot of people have been asking of the board, which is to temporarily house the library in the upstairs of the town hall? That's what we want to know, because winter, not to sound games of throwing is coming. <laughs> There, there's support I, for just, both. Just, there's support from the community for I'm both clear. using the, the town hall, and there's also a lot of opposition against okay, using I'm not, it. I'm not seeing it. I'm not hearing it. I'd love to oh, see Oh, so that if data. you'd like people to come marching in, um, then we can have that. But quite frankly, I talk to a lot of those people, and what I say to them is, is we're working on a compromise. Mm -hmm. Trust me, we're trying to work both sides so it's a win-win, and that's what. I met uh, with you, we talked about it, I met with you, and we talked about that. And quite frankly, it has seemed to go on to deaf ears, quite frankly. I got a letter um, from you, Corey, this week stating that we weren't doing anything for you. Um, I think that's a mischaracterization. I think what I was reaching out to was to try and understand the sentiment by the board of all the opposition that you were hearing from. I was trying to get a sense of the numbers. And I was also responding to Jason's comment that we were bypassing the original plan by moving into the library, avoiding due process. And I was merely stating that the original plan has been at a standstill since April. There's been no further discussion by the select board. We weren't even on your old business agenda anymore, so there wasn't really any movement. We recognized that another winter was approaching. And that's, the, that's what I was trying to convey. Not that you haven't done anything. Obviously, you voted that we could move for the winter, and I think that's a huge recognition, and I really appreciate it. I was trying to respond to the suggestion that somehow we were bypassing a, a plan. Because I'm really committed to having a full, as you point out, John, like change takes time. These things take time. And, I've been in very involved in the school board since 2017 in the redesign, and I've seen how they've chosen to go about things, where it's just the panel of, of the people sitting at the board table making the decisions without really including the community, and I don't, I don't want that. So we're asking for temporary housing to get through this winter so that we can get this committee off the ground that was discussed in April that includes a wide variety of townspeople that want to be involved to come up with something that could be exciting and fun and really build community and bring people to the village center. All the things that you talked about when you originally invited us to consider this option in 2017. So I mean, I, obviously if you tell us it's the landfill or nothing, that's where we'll go, but I, I think that that's a little short-sighted. Well, I, I, I believe we did rule out the landfill, so. Um, I think we just have to work on something that will be amenable to both of us, all of us. Well, I, again, I think before John, we can do anything, we need to have someone come I, in. I agree mm -hmm. with that, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you, it would comfort you folks, I would, I would think, to have another assessment done uh, and find out. And if there is a huge problem that can't be fixed, then, then we'll have to... Um, Figure out something else, but that's at first, I mean, from what you're telling me, um, I don't want to put anyone up or down in that building. I mean, we do have a lot of dinners and lunches and so on down in the basement, and nobody's ever complained about so, the facility. So, and, um, but I think we can have this done fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't think it takes very long. Um, but I think that's probably the best thing for all of us. I mean, you know what's going on, we know what's going on, and we can make the best decision for everyone. Is there any sort of scenario in, in terms of compromise that you guys can envision that we're using the basement but not storing materials down there? Depending on how much and where you were storing them upstairs. I mean, there's a huge pushback of having anything on that, um, the main floor. And we've talked about that, and I said, you know, if you can put things up on the stage, 
somehow and, and then the, the problem there is that we got mm -hmm. Cheryl Lynn talking about that because we have there's only so much room up there and there's the, the room that you need for the voting things but I would assume that those things could be moved once a year certainly definitely one other thought is handicapped access the main floor is really the only floor that has handicapped access that elevator doesn't go to the basement, does yes, it? it does. Yes, oh, it does? Oh, my doesn't go to the stage. Oh, doesn't go to the stage. Oh, go to the my stage. mistake. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah, in fact, that's some of the, the better. Okay. As far I just as thought, I didn't realize it went down there. Up. They go up and down, those things. Well, I know that it goes up. I just didn't know that it went all the way down. Do you think a scenario like scenario three where we're using the basement for programming and have all the shelving on the stage is going to appease the people who say absolutely not on the main floor with a guarantee from us that we're going to make it in compliance with town meeting and voting space regulations? I think those are the type of things that we're looking for, yeah. your point earlier we value the employee we have there I mean we think we have the best uh, and I've said that many a times so I've worked hard to try to get, to make this happen really have yes you have no doubt I mean look around <laughs> you know seriously <laughs> you know you talk about people uh, you know who are against it I mean I've talked to a lot of my colleagues here to get them to open up their minds about it we appreciate that so i mean it's that's why I, you know i really need your help to, to understand where i'm where we're trying to come from and we're trying to explain where we're coming we, from. i you totally know? get that that's where we're here that's why we're here that's why we you know we had that meeting to make sure that we're doing something you know you don't do something like that unless you really care about someone right mm -hmm. seriously and that's what we're trying to do here. We're just, we're concerned that, you know, we have pretty, I was pretty astounded at the value of our collection, not, that doesn't even include labor. And just the assets, you know, I just, I feel like it would be irresponsible of us as a library board to put those town assets at risk because you guys do a great job making sure that we're not overspending in our town and that we're careful. And and we we want to be fiscally responsible as well. Um, that's our job. Um, so, you know, if people don't want us to be upstairs just because they want to be able to sit home and imagine that it's empty, meanwhile, having all of this, our asset at risk, I. It just seems like it's... Well, I think that's why it, I think it's going to do um, some good if we have a professional in there. Give us what these numbers are, and then we can make those arguments either way. So let's first, let's look at that. Um, we've already talked about some scenarios where you can have your collection upstairs um, on, on the stage area. Um, and we even talked earlier about ferrying some books back and forth, less, less popular ones, because yeah. the, the thing is going to be on the I think L, the last meeting, estimated when we were talking about what we wanted to move in terms of the new books and the part of the children's collection was around 20, 25%. And we have 6,000 books, so that tells you what we're talking about. about. All right, so um, let us contact someone tomorrow um, get someone in there. I think we can probably get that done within a week or two. Um, and then why don't we come back? We're, we're getting together in two weeks here um, on the, what, the 21st? Is that the next meeting? Can you guys come back then and we'll have this all then. In the meantime, if there's questions or concerns, just reach out. Thank you. Does that work for everyone? Mm -hmm. So at the 21st, we'll have like a plan I think voted well, yeah. on so we can start working on whatever we're doing yes yes that would be great
One detailed question. Sure. 25% uh, of 6,000 books would be about how many linear feet of shelf space? Uh, I can't give you that answer off the top of my okay. head, but Elda did have that worked out in her to scale mm -hmm. model. So that's back there. And be sure to bring that. Hopefully, maybe we can work between now and then and have some ideas on this, but make sure you have that for next time as well. Have what? The model. Oh, we, yes. We I, know you, I know you have it now, but just next time so that we can get there other questions. If you want to see it, we're happy to bring it to the table. No, we, we're good now, I think. All right. Once again, we do thank you for everything you do. Yeah, we'll be able to work something out. Thank you. Thank you. I just want the community to have a chance to weigh in before any big decisions are made. No, I think that's, I think everyone wants that as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So we're right on time. So, uh, Sasha, you have the errors and omissions? Change in acreage. So this here, um, this is from the uh, Board of Listers request us to make the uh, change to um, parcel ID 13-003.000. Uh, it's Washington Electric. Value is going from uh, 1.4 million uh, to 1.7. Did you say that was based on the acreage adjustment? Yeah, mm -hmm. acreage adjustment. All in favor? All in favor. Yep. And so he uh, was all set with us? I confirmed on that, though. You know what? Until he signs off on this, I don't want it. Yep. That's just an easement for yep. uh, the Mono Electric Co op. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine, mm -hmm. but until Martin looks at it, I don't need to, um, yep. to do that. 911? Yep. Uh, Riversview Drive, Boulder Drive, or Riverview Drive? The Rivers Development. Uh, so they want us to choose this? I guess so. Yeah. Do it. So I guess I'd start with the first one. Yeah, uh, did they indicate a preference? Um, I think the first or the third one was. There's a Riverview Road in Waitsfield, so let's take off Riverview. Um, there's a River Road in Duxbury. You know, I think Boulder Drive would be probably the easiest to distinguish. Where is this? This is on uh, 100B. This would be um, Rich, or I don't know if it's Rich Rivers, but it's Richard, Richard, um, Rivers Development, LLC. I think Boulder Drive is appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> if he said he'd rather have his name, I'd be okay with Riverview. Yeah, if they had it. didn't say it. Right, there's no preference there, so I'd mm -hmm. go with uh, Boulder Drive. Boulder Drive, okay. That's fine. <clears throat> Thank you. Is that it? Yes. Um, so, you know, we have a little bit of time before we have our next guest, so I want to do a few uh, reports and communications. Does anyone have anything? Uh, well, I did look at the rear entrance to, or side entrance to the town hall with both uh, Martin and Joe Gabbery. Mm -hmm. And uh, the solution that we have proposed would be, uh, would be to lower the grade about six inches. Um, dig down to the footing, put stone in, uh, put a trench drain in a, in a slab, and have it feed into that footing drain, and discharge the water out into the, into the river. Um, and 
that would be, you know, using the town crew to do the excavation work uh, around four thousand dollars. It looks like. I'd say under five thousand dollars, anyways. But Joe gave me some pricing, but Joe is uh, not sure he can do the work. So, if we have to have somebody else do the concrete work, it might be a little bit more. So, okay. To be safe, we're still under five thousand dollars. Yeah. If you want to do that this fall, we can do that. All right. I think that's something that probably should be done. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Regardless of. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would think so that we would want to do it regardless if the library yes. goes there or not. And it will cost us more if we don't. Yeah. Right. So, if, Ray, if you want to follow up on that. Get it done? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Okay. Kelly? John? Yeah, a bunch of things. All right. So, after last week's um, forum, there was an informal discussion which I thought went very well. It was uh, pretty much led by uh, Brian Moore, who lives next door to me. And um, there were, I'd say, uh, at least half a dozen board members there. And, uh, and most of the uh, gathering was more town and face than residents. But I, I really had the feeling that they're beginning to listen a little bit more. Uh, I may be mistaken, but um, it was pretty obvious that a lot of them were in the dark in terms of outreach into the community. Um, some thought they had, really, and so on, but we set those people straight. Um, so I know that they're doing another one after tonight's forum, and I hope that that, that might even be more important since that forum is going to be loaded with Waterbury people. Um, also, on that uh, same note, um, I don't know if you noticed, but well, not this past week's Valley Reported, but the week before, Lisa Loomis put in an article on the redesign and the th three scenarios. And all she had was the first scenario, scenario A, which underneath had A, B, and C, and smaller A, B, and C rather than the big A. And she said that uh, I called her on it because it was just scenario A, which had more town closing except for pre-K and early ed. So I got on the phone and I spoke with her, and she said, oh, well, I, just, I just saw the report and went down, and I hit the table, and I said, oh, here's the table. And I printed it because time was of essence to get the paper out. Um, of course, she apologized and had a little bit of a correction in this past week's other reporter, but... This is the type of thing we have to be very, very careful about. You know, misinformation that's out there, too much, there's just too much going back and forth. And um, you know, we really need to get it focused where it needs to be focused. And that's the school board who runs the show, not the admin team. <clears throat> Thank you for listening to that. Um, now, that, on clean water, well, we have a couple things going on in clean water. I have another clean water advisory committee coming up on Wednesday after the clean water network meeting at the um, Epi, um, Center in, um, in uh, Burlington. So, um, anyway, um, where we are with the clean water advisory committee is we have uh, put together a letter that's going to go to um, uh, the trustees of the Central Mountain Regional Planning Commission, which hopefully will be forwarded on to the um, Agency of Natural Resources regarding our thoughts on, um, you know, basically uh, phosphorus and keeping water clean, stormwater runoff, the likes. Um, I'm actually offering my opinion on um, reducing the number of trees that we cut down, uh, r reducing clear cutting. It's really amazing what the state does allow, mm -hmm. but um, the best way to get rid of some of the things that are washed out with stormwater is to have the trees suck it up. So uh, at any rate, um, I'm big on trees sucking up water. <laughs> <coughs> And speaking of trees, I went to the annual tree warden meeting on Saturday, and um, 
it's kind of interesting. Um, a tree like Lone Pine here, um, I really should be letting people know, the public know, so I will put something on Trump Porch mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, some towns even have votes on whether to take a tree down if it's a real big tree. And I apologize to those who really like that tree. Is that one over there? The Lone Pine. I'm sorry. It has to come. Okay. You don't like the tree? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, if you make a turn every day, you probably don't like it quite as much. <laughs> but at any rate, it, we did find rot and the state is willing to take it down as part of the sidewalk project. So I, I did give the okay on it after having a tree expert come up to inspect it. And um, that's pretty much it. I think, John? Construction selection. Oh, construction selection. Je Jason, would you like to address that? <laughs> sure. Um, we have to choose a resident engineer for the town on our project. And we submitted, we selected, let me start over. What we did was we used a special process that's used that's much faster than a open bid. And in order to follow that process, you have to follow very specific federal and state rules, which we did. And we chose our first preference bidder. They gave us their proposal. And the proposal included someone who graduated, as the resident engineer, someone who graduated in 2018. So we thought that, that was not getting what we need on this project, so we are going to move on to our second choice. That's it. Have you got back what they're proposing of the second choice? No. No. Matter of fact, I have not heard back from Pat in it's been know, three or four days. Because mm -hmm. um, he was recommending a, another meeting, and Sasha and I kind of agreed that um, that wasn't necessary to have him come to out here to meet again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we had already decided, go on to number two. So we're going on to number Was two. the first firm, did you guys talk to them and say, do you have someone a little bit? Not allowed. Again, yeah. not allowed. those yeah. very we specific checked. federal yeah. rules. I see. Yeah. So check with Chris case. Hunt on that. He said, no. He says, if you feel strongly about that, move on to the next. So. No, I think, and I think that's one of those and we talked about experience on boards earlier tonight. Mm -hmm. Experience on a, you know, a half a million or three quarters of a million dollar project is something I'd want. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else, Jason? That's it. All right. So I'll uh, real quick. So, so last week I got um, a call from Cheryl Lynn, kind of a really disturbing call. Um, she just had someone come in. Spent about 20 minutes in the base in the bathroom. Um, she was here alone, um, wrapping on the door, and they ended up coming out and they were um, had syringes in their pocket and such. Um, they, their car was parked out to the back of the sidewalk here. Um, they stumbled out, somewhat passed out in the car, and then Cheryl and opened the door and they took off and. So she called me and I said, got the phone and called the police. So that was the first mm -hmm. thing to do. Um, so, uh, you know, we need to, um, so I talked to Sherilyn about what to do in the future, uh, Sasha as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty clear, that, you know, if we have that going on, call the police and, and we get out. Um, but what I think we need to do, we need to consider um, budgeting for some security cameras. Mm -hmm. Just, I, and I think even for the records that we have, but see who's coming in and out. Um, mm -hmm. We can direct one uh, either way as well. And mm -hmm. Sasha's looking into that mm -hmm. as, as well already. I mean, so really nothing to be said there, just uh, it's an awful problem that, you know, someone driving by, I don't know. I think it was out of state plates. Out of state plates. Um, Hmm. Just pulled in, walked in, walked in the building, and wow. straight to the bathroom and locked themselves in. So um, they say when you go into bathrooms, not to put your phone anywhere because bathrooms are the prime 
Yeah. Like oh, they do. I mean, now you go to all the rest of your they all have the needle exchange thing. Or it's not even that. It's, it's you, anything so, that has a flat surface, not to put your phone off, because people will snort cocaine off of it and mm. use it for everything. And you put it on your phone, you put your phone onto your face, and it goes through your skin. Stuff like fentanyl will go through your skin. Oh, good tips. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so <laughs> Sasha's looking into that. Um, we're looking to see what we uh, mm -hmm. what we can do. Uh, I know she's got some proposals back, but we'll look, see what we have in the budget, and then decide if it's something we can do immediately or whether it's. So, um, can you lock the bathroom door so people would have to come to get a key before they went in there? I don't know, but that's a good. You can just walk over and see if it's locked. Is there a key? I know Sherilyn has a key to it, but she wasn't quite sure if she wanted to. Go that route. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that's an improvement or not. Yeah, I don't think we want, unless it's something that starts happening, mm -hmm. call the police and get out of here. We're not going to stop people from, from doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it would be good to have the security cameras around. Um, probably we should have built the building, it would have probably been a good idea to have them. But that. Um, yes, and. Uh, a security camera covered sign on the door would make sense too. Yep. So, anyways, uh, so that's all I have for announcements. But moving Did on. Did you tell the school about that too? I mean, because she had to because she was going to go get her grandkids in oh, yeah. about quarter after two when she needed to be over there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would think they would find that scary as well. Disturbing. Yeah. And that's why that's good. They have the locked door that year. That you go into, but that's what we have. Uh, okay, so all right. So why don't we go ahead and move on to the next agenda item, which is the um, the Commons Condo Association. So if there's someone representing that. If they want to. All of us back here. All of you back there. <laughs> or is there one spokes? There or if there's one or two spokesperson, or if you all speak, it, come on up. All right. This public, do you? I don't what know what you're, you're here for, so let's. Uh, pardon me? We need to know a little more. So okay, my name is Angelo Napolitano. Hi, Hi Sasha. Hi, Jason. And you are? Tom Martin. And you are? John Hoganman. I know you. <laughs> I know you too. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is Donna Stackhouse. She's our, the other. Board secretary. And you are the board president. Board president. Okay. I inherited this, mm -hmm. Angelo. Yeah. If you think that there may be something that shouldn't be public, that's you right. You could let the chair know what that is. Pretty much all of this. Um, In what respect is it? I mean, um, I have a question to the board here. Okay, all of you. I was told that you signed off on a particular problem we have, saying that it's the condo's problem, not the town of Vermont, not the town of Moortown's problem, as far as a hoarder goes, as far as grease fires go, because it's a condo problem. Did you do that? Have we signed off? I don't think we've signed anything. I, I didn't say sign. I didn't say you signed okay. anything. I said. So you, you do told. share. Do share with the board what our responsibilities are inside of a condo. And I'd like what are you, your decks and bylaws and how they how they work there as well. Our decks and bylaws. This individual is in violation of three to four. However, the state fire marshal says that each hallway is a public entrance. From what I am told, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that this body said it is a private entrance. Now we have a state fire marshal that said that it is a public 
building. You have state statute, which I have in my here, mm -hmm. that says it's public. This gentleman over there says it's public. We have a health problem in that building. Not only in that building, but we have a health problem in the connecting building. What I would like to see done is the constable and the health officer, with your cooperation, issue a warrant so we can enter that condominium. So, because we have taken how many bags of garbage out of there? 67. Like that? That was in May and June. Two months ago, or a month ago, I took out how many, Rachel? I don't know. 14. 12, 15 yeah. bags. Like that. Now, state statute, which I have in here. The air quality in that hallway, in the air quality, in the three, four other units in that building are zip. We had another grease fire there yes, uh, two weeks ago. But of course, this body, from what I am told, told this man to step down. He hasn't gotten involved yet. And there's an animal in there. And correct me if I'm wrong, he was told not to come out to check him out, right? I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Now, let me just say this. If that particular building was near the Moortown store, this body would have police ribbon around it in the first year. Because it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Now, I do have all state statutes on the health code. There's an, how old is Pat? 87. Living downstairs from this hoarder, mm -hmm. And the smell is coming through his, no, take a, take a look. He disconnects the fire alarm because he has fires in that condo constantly and nobody can get in. Um, so this 80 something year old lady is living downstairs and this is seeping through his floor, through her ceiling, and she walks with water. Take a walk. So your condominium declarations doesn't, you, there's nothing that you guys can do against this guy except come to the town and ask us to do it? We have asked, we're asking the town to okay a warrant so Ray, Richard, the fire marshal, the electric, uh, the the fire marshal, the electrician um, inspector, the plumbing inspector, and the structural inspector, all at the same time can enter his building. Because we put it out there, and we say we're going to come in tomorrow or in seven days to inspect. He will okay that, but the day of, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here at all. Is anybody so, 
If anybody says we're going in anyway, he threatens to shoot them. You'd say guys don't go in then, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. So you're expecting the um, the animal control officer because he's been there well, and he gets the same we're, treatment. We're asking for police support when he's. So why don't you don't call the police when he threatens you? He hasn't threatened yeah. any of us. You can keep this for and so you're asking us not to run away. write it a warrant. Is that what? I'm asking you to do whatever you can to make the situation safe. Again, I don't see where the town it's into condominiums. Here here here's here's my question. If Ray and Richard want to get a warrant, would you back them? They come to us and looking for warrants. Yeah, I think I would. Would Definitely. you? Definitely. Would you? I would want Is to review what jurisdiction we have. I'm not familiar with it, but yes, if, if we do, yes. It's the jurisdiction. Well, I'm going to check with our lawyer, to be quite honest with you, before we start. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that'd be a wise decision. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I'd like to point out, I mean, first of all, I didn't even know this guy was still there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, certainly, we've had conversations with Richard. He's come in before, but there hasn't been anything like this in a couple of years, more than a couple of years. Yes, I'm, I'm feeling very out of the loop here. Yeah. I, so, I mean, heard about this. This, this young not, lady not lives right across the hall from him. Mm -hmm. So if you want to continue public record, we can sit and talk to this man for the next couple of days. You want a story? I'll give you a story. I'll give Peter Hirschfeld this story. I'll give Neil, Neil Goswabi this story. You want to give the stories? Mm -hmm. We'll give them out there. When was the last time you heard anything on this? Yeah, I mean, we, we don't like to be accused of anything that we have not done, OK? We definitely will back you. We have backed Richard in the past. OK. OK. And okay. we will back you. Going because forward. I have so all, if I have all know, this. If we don't know what's going on, if we're out of the loop, we can't help well, you. you. see, you see. I'm and glad again, you came and in. again. I'm glad you came in. Because you know, you've made us you need to be responsible stuff. as condo owners in the condo association to, to take care of your bylaws. And it's always not Big Brother, the government, going to come in and take care of you. Let me, let, me, let me address one thing first, and then I'll address that. I inherited this. I got elected two months ago. If you want to know the storm other than this, we should have coffee sometime. To answer your question, big brother, is it's a state statute, period. I have them all right here on sanitation. And this is a sanitation problem. So you want to talk to your attorney, that's fine. You talk to your attorney. I have statute here, and I'll go one, one step further, that the cooperation, you should have him check out statute 18VSA 624 and 18VSA 617. Anything else you have to look? So when should I come back to get your answer? What answer are you looking for? That you're talking to your attorney. Well, we'll check with him and see what our jurisdiction is. We'll send him a note tomorrow. So Sasha, my phone number is 802-477-3855. What he is reading is the fine the town can get. We don't like threats either, by the way. No, that is not a threat. That was a statement. Okay. When I threaten, you'll know. 
and I don't usually threaten. I have dark humor. No, I certainly like to refer to these, seeing that the first lines is relationship between the homeowners association and their select boards vary around the state. Yeah. Ideally, the homeowners association and the select board work together. Yes. Right. And okay. you gave me well, your answer, you would do that, yeah. which is greatly appreciated. John, it's been real. Mm -hmm. Um, um, yeah. okay. well, I, I just wanted to be clear on a couple things about. We just haven't heard of his problem for a long time. I've never heard about the fire issues. Yes, or three. News to us. Well, you know, the, the other condo president came here one time and then left. What? He never pursued. We never heard about fires. Uh, there, there have been fires. Uh, written up in the reports that uh, tech services did and we talked Thank about you, it. I mean, uh, you know, basically uh, the last time we came before the board, board um, you made the decision that uh, we didn't, I didn't have jurisdiction at, in the condo and therefore I haven't been there in only two years. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem continues. I still get complaints. Uh, the odor is terrible up there. I feel, from all of my experiences uh, running the air pollution control program for 45 years, that, uh, that there is a health issue associated with those apartments, and the question really gets down to, is it a private or is it a public nuisance? And it, that is a public building. So I, yeah, uh, and uh, right now, uh, nobody can get entrance into his apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I if I uh, put out an emergency health order, it has to come to the board anyways for uh, for a hearing. So I, I've just been holding holding back on anything. But this problem uh, is not going away. It hasn't in the last ten years. Um, can I just say, I'm even newer to the board than Angelo, um, but from my research and understanding of what has happened in the past is that um, our property management company, Technical Planning, has requested inspections because of the complaints, and of course they've always been refused. I, I know recently we imposed a fine. I don't know how much technical planning has fined him in the past. The last was 200. But I don't have any time to say fine. Um, several to numerous, somewhere in between. Well, well he, 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 he fines, he, owe, he owes well over two, maybe three thousand dollars in fines. Yeah, we keep fine. They have been fining him. They've been re requesting inspections because he's violating the bylaws, but we don't have anything in the bylaws that, you know, allows us to just go in mm -hmm. against his, you know, uh, I guess, wishes, well. or whatever, and he refuses or threatens to shoot. We've been, I've already researched with the mental health services in Washington County. There's not much, if he won't go to a counselor, we can't really do anything, you know, because I, I talked to them. They're like, well, if he can come into our office and, you know, we can help him, but we can't make him go get help. And so ideally you would like Ray to take this or, or, or Dick to take this. Just help so me out. What we're, is we're feeling like we have to go through the court system to force these inspections and start forcing his eviction because he's a, he's a danger to the other residents. We're not dumping it in your lap. We're asking for your help. But because, tell us because the thing is, is that once he gets the warrant, or Richard gets the warrant, then I will be there, the board will be there, the fire marshal will be there, the only way the fire marshal can step in there after the fire two weeks ago, three weeks ago, is clear and present danger. 
and there was nobody there clear and present danger. So we're not saying here, this is yours, see ya, we're, we're out of here. We because just, I don't operate that. We're trying to facilitate the process. So does Dick need, we need to tell Dick deal. to go into the place? Is that what you're asking us to do? We're asking you to okay Dick and Ray to get a search warrant from the state so we can enter that place. That's all we're asking. We're not asking you to issue the search warrant. That's what I heard before. Have you called APS? Adult Protective Services? Adult Protective Services? I yes. I am Rachel's sister. And I have called Washington County Mental Health. They I have nothing. called this gentleman and left numerous messages. And I have left messages all over, even like the Humane Society. What do I do about this animal in there? And the bugs crawling through the wall into yeah. my six sister's apartment. She hasn't been able to work for 20 years or whatever. She has Lyme disease. The air in there is absolutely disgusting. And I'm begging, because I have called everybody, please, somebody help. And it is unbelievably disgusting. The, the, the board, the, the select board should, you don't even need to go into, into the apartment of the condominium. Whenever you want to take a day trip, go on up there and just walk in the front door. That's all you need to do. You talk about property values declining. Who's going to buy in a, a, a condo in that building with that stench and that smell? I, I did talk to Dale about social services and I do remember. The VA, and he's everything. mentally inept. There is a mental, he has a mental disability of whatever sort. And he's not going to agree to anything. <coughs> we've had. Well, we will uh, check with our attorney and see where our mm -hmm. jurisdiction lies. If, I, I think last time that is what we did, and that's probably why we told Dick there was nothing that we could do. Um, because I think that you. Several times went out there, Dick, and I, and I don't know. There's a file mm -hmm. here I can look at. Um, but we'll check with Ron in the morning, see where our jurisdiction lies, and if we can allow you to to get this warrant, um, you know, I don't have a problem with it. Um, mm -hmm. But we just need to make sure where our jurisdiction is, and we're not liable for going in and tearing up someone's. Well, you see, the thing is, is that whatever Mike Lorraine is charging him. Whatever, anything else, there has been no consequences. And the unfortunate thing is the other three owners in that place are paying the consequence. Mm -hmm. Okay? What has to happen, I'm asking, the next grease fire, and if I'm not there, and Rachel's not there, he burns the place down, kills the 80-something-year-old woman next door, and then it just continues straight through? Because it's not only affecting condominiums one through four, it's affecting this building over here because they are getting the stench, they are getting the bugs, they are getting the maggots. I forgot to talk to you about all of that. What kind of living conditions is that for somebody? Mm -hmm. And these are common buildings. If they were private, each front door would have a lock, and each person that lives there would have a key. But that's not the way it is. They're, they're common. And there's statute to back up whatever I'm saying. John Redwall. All right, so we have a plan. I know the gentleman in the hat had a comment. Did you want to go ahead? <clears throat> My name is uh, Brian Orm, a resident of the Commons as well for over 15 years. And I'm addressing the point you made, Chair, about what is your, why is it your uh, 
uh, case that involved an association issue. Well, like just in case we have been trying ourselves, and we went to police and health inspectors and the pet, pet guy. So we have been doing this progression. And so what is our next step if it's not going to you? With this, we have two women who are, who are health endangered, eight, seven year old, and someone who has an immune compromised disease live right in where the stench is. So what do we do next if it's not you, or if it's not you helping us to get it done, what do we do next? Because we can no longer go in there and talk to anyone who's not cooperating at all. With, you know, visitation, mm -hmm. fines, or just nothing. So the point you made is how you involve an association. We have gone forward with steps. So now we're asking you, how are you the next step? If not, do we have to go somewhere else? Because we have citizens, lives, health at risk. And we just like to know, is this your our next step? All right, there. thanks. I appreciate your comment. No, yeah. Very nice. And so uh, thanks. for We, we will um, check it out in the morning to see where our jurisdiction is. And if this is the place where you're going to get your next action, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. And if it's not, we'll let you know and where you might need it's, to proceed next to. We can't proceed legally until we get it inspected, you know, so we I'm can't really take it to the courts to go further to evict him yeah. until we get those inspections. Right. The question appears to be where do you get your warrant from? from. Yes. Right. right, and if it's from us mm -hmm. or through these guys, through us, we're all for that. We'll try to help you get the warrant however you need to get it. That's what you're mm -hmm. looking for. If it's not us and it turns out to be through the court system, I don't think there's much we could do to help you. So we'll find, so we'll we'll find out what the case is. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So we're going to check it out. We need that to proceed. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. Well, we'll get you that answer. And it shouldn't be very long. It should, we should be able to get that fairly quick tomorrow. Okay. So the, if there's any other questions, uh, you can let Sasha know. But otherwise, we'll get in touch with, I guess, so you, the person. Um, or Angelo. I would do Angelo. Angelo. Mm -hmm. Angelo, does Sasha have your contact information? Yeah. Everything that I discuss, I put in writing so everybody can see it. And I have to say this again. The previous condo president let this fall through the cracks when he came to see you people once. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Twice. Rest assured, I'm not going to let this fall through the cracks. Thank you for your time. And that was not a threat. Mm -hmm. Does she have your contact information? She's got my cell phone. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like you have a good chair. Pardon me? I said, sounds like you have a good chair. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. You're welcome. We have documents. Go ahead and just look at um, these reports right now. Just start looking here. What's that? I think John probably signed that for. Uh, no, right, right, right. Yeah, that was my. That was my last week or something. <laughs> We're just signing off on documents. Is there any, you know, kind of general public comments closed, but is there anything that anyone else is waiting for? Or just hang on. <laughs> I'm 
Sasha, you're not going to be here next week. Does everyone know that? So if anyone's looking for Sasha, Sasha, they need to be looking in Arizona. Hmm. Two things, too. Um, Greg Wagner would like some approval from you guys to get the street lights out in the parking lot switched over to LEDs. And I told him before anything could be done, he needs to get the quotes anyway. So, start there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? See if he. Um checks out Efficiency Vermont, because they would probably give them new, uh, I'm sure there's a program, I did it for um, a nonprofit, and they, and they um, I don't know, they give thousands of dollars replacing all the outside. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was and just a simple, uh, uh, whatever it is. Craig is looking for approval to get us prices on health care. Sure. I think anytime anyone's okay. more competition is better. Okay. And so we'll have, uh, you don't think so, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll still uh, make sure we have other options as well that we've been, mm -hmm. been okay. looking for. Okay, I don't know how you got that clip on there. It's not going back. That's okay. <laughs> also, um, Martin was going to come in tonight. Um, obviously, he couldn't make it. I think he's ready. Have you talked to him at all about an injury in his rotor cuff? No. All right, so I think that he may have hurt his arm. So we may. Um, oh, is that what? What do you know about that? All I know is that his, he can he can't lift his arm. He can go here, and he's got to go up, and it's time sensitive to get it fixed. Otherwise, it's going to be okay. permanent. Okay. So he may be out over the winter. Yeah, it's like here. So I don't know if he thinks maybe he needs someone to do like the pickup truck plowing, or if he thinks everyone will be fine. I don't even know. Yeah. All right, so I'll give him a call in the morning just to find out what I know he had intended to be here. Um, but we may need to think about doing, figuring out something for uh, at least the pickup plowing. Cause I, and he may think that they'll be fine. I, yeah. I don't know. All right, well, I'll, get, I'll talk to him and find out, make sure he's um, taking care of it. I think the main thing that we want to make sure is that he's doing it and doing it right and not mm -hmm. How is this right? Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, anyone else, I guess, Dick, do you mind signing in? Did you get a chance to sign in? And whoever's not here, I guess I meant to ready to put you down. I'll sign in for the library too. <laughs> so, good morning. If you could talk to Ron, find that you know what the question is the jurisdiction on. Um, um, well, so he can give me a call if he has any questions about that. Okay. I, Dick, you don't remember last time that I, I seem to recall that we um, we did get the attorney involved, and that's why that you couldn't do anything else. No, uh, uh, I shouldn't have much of a problem getting a uh, inspection, a court order on an inspection. I mean, that uh, under the health regulations. Uh, that never came up. What it really, really boiled down to was um, the question, is this a public or a private nuisance up there? And, right. And the town, and between you and, and the other Tom, you guys decided that, you know, that this wasn't under the jurisdiction of the town, that's all. 
yeah. And so that's that's why I've walked away from it. I've continued to do inspections with technical services, but uh, they haven't been able to do any inspections at all over the last year and a half. And this thing goes up and down like right. this. Uh, like like we haven't heard anything for yeah. a few but years. No, uh, uh, I don't think uh, Ron was not our attorney. Yeah, I know he was the same. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we even no, we I, I discussed could, that. I know we looked into it because I don't. I, we will yeah. re-look into it just to be sure, um, because it's the fine line moved between what's public and private here. Yeah, and yeah. And, it, and they are public buildings. I mean, they're they, they're under the public water supply uh, and and other things. Uh, it's it is not like just a private place. Right, but where the town gets involved in those I, situations, no, I, I, I mean, I, it's a little right. different than saying it's a public building. Right. It's not a public building. It's not. Yeah. It's a it's a condominium association. But uh, well, it 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 is co covered under some public building laws, such as for mm -hmm. water. I get the inspection mm -hmm. reports. I understand, but mm -hmm. where the town's jurisdiction is, that's I, I'm not, where. I'm, I'm, but we'll look into it and yeah. and see. But there is there is a health health issue up there. The question is, is it a is it a public nuisance or a private nuisance? Okay. No, I agree. I think there probably is an issue, but whose whose problem is it? Is it the towns or is it the, the condominium associations? Basically, is what the so any other questions, concerns tonight? Move to adjourn. Oh, minutes. Oh. I'll move we approve the minutes from 916. Oh, yeah. Second. All in favor? Hold on. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, <coughs> move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.